All right, we're going to look at exponential and logarithmic equations. So starting with number one, it wants you to solve these exponential equations. So we know they're exponential equations because our variable is in the exponent. So remember, the first thing we want to do is try to get the basis to match. If the basis on each side cannot become the same, uh, you can take natural log or you can take log of both sides. Okay, and we want the exact answer and decimal answer if, if that um, happens. All right, so when I look at the number eight, I know that's 4 and 2 and 2 and 2. So looking at all those 2s, that's really 2 to the third power. Let's do the 2x minus 5. Let's see if 32 can be made that way. I hope so. This will be 8 and 4, 2 and 2, 4 and 2, and 2 and 2. So that's a total of 5 2, so 2 to the fifth. And then x minus 6. So remember we have that power raised to a power. We said that we would um, actually multiply our exponents together. So this will be 2 to the 6x minus 15, that's what's distributing, is equal to 2 to the 5x minus 30. And now that the bases match each other, because exponential functions are 1 to 1, we know that if those outputs are equal, then these inputs were equal. That is 6x minus 15 has to equal 5x minus 30. So we started out with an exponential equation, and now we're looking at really the, the linear equation. Let's try and put all of our x's on one side. I'm going to move over my x, that negative 5x over. Let's cancel. 6x minus 5x is just x, or 1x. Minus 15 equals negative 30. Add 15 to both sides. That gets us x is equal to negative 15. All right, and then as a reminder, you can plug that back in to see if that makes sense. Um, There's a really big exponent that you have going on there, so it won't be the, um, won't work really well to plug into a calculator, but you can at least tell that the exponents would be equal to each other. All right, so this next one, the bases don't match at all. That's a three and a five. So I'm going to use natural log and so again, natural log of both sides, because what we mean is that if these quantities are equal, the natural log of those quantities also has to be equal. But the reason why we want to involve log um, is because of that property log that allows us to take the power on our argument to the front. And so we're going to do that actually, do it for both sides. So this will be a 6x plus 5 times that natural log of 3 equals, put that 2x in the front, natural log of 5. So even though it's not that pretty, just a reminder, natural log of 3 is a number, natural log of 5 is a number. So on the previous problem, we tried to get our x's alone. We're going to do that also here because we have x's on both sides. But right before that, I'm going to distribute the natural log in here. Again, it's like a number. We're going to have natural log of 3 times 6x plus natural log of 3 times 5, I can write the 5 in the front, looks a little nicer, equals 2x natural log of 5. So then I want my x's on one side, so I'm going to move this guy over, so I'm going to minus it, natural log of 3 times 6x. Now actually that's starting to look a little confusing. I should have put the 6x in the front. I'm going to go back and write that in the front, because otherwise you can't tell what you're taking natural log of. If I put the 6x in the front, you can see that a lot clearer. Okay, so minus 6x natural log of 3. So then those cancel. We have 5 times natural log of 3 equals, now these are kind of like terms, but it's hard to see because of that natural log, which you could use your calculator and punch that in and find out that it's going to be some sort of decimal. Um, before we get to that point, I want to find the exact answer. So one thing that I notice right now is that there's two x's here. Normally, again, we'd combine like terms like 2x minus 6x and say negative 4x, but they're attached to those natural logs. So if I factor that x out, it might look a little bit nicer. And then that big chunk that I just wrote is really just a number. And so if I divide by that number to get x alone, it 
those cancel, and so we have what x is equal to. This is called the exact value. Let me write my minus a little bit nicer here. So this is the exact value. If you punch it in on your calculator, um, you would want to make sure you put the um, bottom in like a parenthesis. Um, so on a calculator, I would write, um, let's see, five times natural log of three, five times natural log of three, which looks like it's coming out to be about 5.49. But then I would divide by two, again in parentheses, two times natural log of five minus six times natural log of three. So this is gonna be divided by parentheses, two times natural log of five. And often it will automatically put a parenthesis um, after, after the natural log. So make sure you close that off so then it knows it's starting a new thing. So six times natural log of three, close that parenthesis. So it opened one, closed one, and then make sure you put that final closing one on there and then hit equal. So it looks like once you divide by that like chunk of stuff there, <laughs> all in a parenthesis, that is gonna be about negative 1.63. So I would wanna check that. So checking it just means go back to your very original equation and see if that makes sense. So it'll be three to the six times negative 1.6. Let's keep it like that. Plus five should equal, we hope, five to the two times negative 1.6. So they should be really close. So using my calculator here, six times negative 1.6, it's negative 9.6 plus five. This is three to the negative 4.6. And then on the right side, we're looking at five to the two times negative 1.6. Five to the negative 3.2. So 3 to the negative 4.6 power. This right here is 0 0.00638. And then 5 to the negative 3.2 power is 0 0.0058. So almost 0 0.006. So they're really close to each other. So that's a pretty good check for me because I had simplified that or already kind of um, estimated that negative 1.63. Okay, so this would be my estimated value compared to the exact value, which kept it with all those natural logs. Okay. And then just one little reminder, if you are using a calculator to do the exponent, um, sometimes that will look like a y to the x to get an exponent. Um, and then sometimes you just use a little carrot button. So both of those help you take something to a power if you're on your calculator. All right, let's solve these log equations. <clears throat> so remember we had like that type one and type two. So we're trying to get the logs alone onto one side or make them, um, make it so we just have one log equal to another log. So looking at number two here, because the 20 and 24 don't have log on them, we know this is the type where we're gonna wanna convert it to that exponential form. So I wanna isolate log. So this is gonna be, let's minus 20 from both sides. That's gonna be two log eight of three y minus five equals four. Divide by two on both sides to get that two gone. That's log base eight of three y minus five is equal to two. So as soon as you have a single log, like there can't be anything in the front here, just a single log equal to a number. Remember the meaning of log is our base is eight. And we're asking what's the power that would get us that three y minus five. And so we have a two written there. So this is really saying 64 is equal to three y minus five. So we'll add five to both sides, we'll get 69 is equal to three y divided by three. And that gets us y is equal to 23. Remember that for our log equations, we wanna make sure that this is like an okay number. So if I think about plugging back in to the very original, three times 23 is going to be 69 minus five is 64. 
Um, so you can take log of 64. That's all good. Okay. So you can double check for sure that it actually gets you what you want. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's your other double check. The next one, this minus three is not part of the parentheses. So again, we want to um, get the logs all on one side. So I'm going to plus that over um, just because I don't like all that negativity. And I'm also going to plus this log base two of w plus two over. So that way the logs can be together. So the minus three plus three cancels. On the left, I have log base two of w plus log base two of w plus two. Those had canceled, so this is equal to three. So our product property says I combine those to a single log. It'll be log base two of w times w plus two is equal to three. So using the exponential, like what it means to be a log, it's the exponential form. We're gonna say our base is two, the exponent is three, and this is equal to w times w plus two. So eight is equal to, multiplying that, w squared plus two w. Now we turn that log equation into this quadratic. So we wanna make it equal to zero, so I'm gonna minus the eight. And then you could try factoring or use quadratic formula, whatever you'd like. I'm gonna factor this, I think it will work. W, W, four times two is eight, but we need negative eight and add to a positive two. That's a plus four minus two. So our zeros will be uh, negative four and positive two. So again, we think back to our original equation, going back to log base two of negative four can't work. It's not gonna work. That is extraneous. Um, the two will work fine there and then also check it in the other one and that will also be okay. So again, you could verify it completely, but the big thing you want to do is make sure that you're not taking log of a negative number. All right, flipping, flipping over to the next page here. Um, now this, I see log on everything. The one half looks kind of weird hanging out here, so I'm going to bring that as a power using that power rule. So um, in two steps, combining these, because it's subtraction of two logs, into a single log, but as a quotient, that'll be x over 2x plus 6 is equal to and then taking that half as a power. And then right away I see four to the one half power. Well, that's the square root of four. So that's the square root of four, which is two. So this is log base three of two equals log base three of x over two x plus six. Since you have two logs equal to each other, we know the inputs must be equal. So we're gonna write x over 2x plus 6 is equal to 2. Clear the fractions by multiplying by that 2x plus 6 on both sides. Those cancel. We get x is equal to, well, let's distribute because we're multiplying times that whole quantity. It'll be 4x plus 12. We'll put all our x's on one side, so move those over. We're going to get negative 3x is equal to 12. Divide by negative 3 we get x is equal to negative four. And so we wanna make sure that this is okay before we kind of box that in. And oh no, log base three of negative four, that doesn't work. You can't take the log of a negative number, so that is extraneous. And so there is actually no solution here because there's no other, uh, we only got one answer. Now the answer does solve this rational equation that we had come up with after we eliminated the logs kind of. Um, but it's not a solution to the original log problem. All right, last equation here. We have log base 3 of natural log x minus 2. So baby steps here. <laughs> I see log of some chunk of stuff. It's weird that it has a log in it, but let's rewrite this. Our base is 3, our exponent is 0, and this is equal natural log of x minus 2 because that's the argument log of that blob of stuff. So that's saying 1 is equal to natural log of x minus 2. So now we have an equation that has just that single log in it. Now natural log, remember, is log base e of x minus 2. So if I'm going to rewrite this, my base e, my power 1, is supposed to equal x minus 2. So e is equal to x minus 2. When I add 2 to both sides, that gives me e plus 2 is equal to x. So that's my exact value here. 
Um, if I punch the E on my calculator, which you should see like an LM button somewhere, um, you might need to push second and then E and it will pop up, or sorry, natural log, which has a E to the X kind of hidden underneath. Um, and so what that allows you to do is use the E to the whatever power. So we want E to the first power because it's just a single E here. So you should pop up a 2.71828 going on and on and on. And then we're going to add that 2 in there. So it's really 4.718 approximately. That's what our X is. Okay. And so then if we take that, plug that in here. So 4.718 minus 2 um, will get us 2.718. So then we have natural log of that 2.718. Well, that was E. So this is saying log base E of that E, but we know that that's equal to one. So really we're down to just log base three of one equals to zero, which does work. So that's kind of our weird check on that. All right, for number four, um, it wants you to kind of think about an investment problem. Um, there is a formula for compounding continuously and I'm going to write that down here. The amount of money that you um, could make on some amount. So this is your principal uh, times E, that's the number E, to the RT, where R is your annual interest rate and T is the time in years. So if we want the amount of money here to triple, we know that our principal, our starting amount is $3,000. We want it to be $9,000. And this is E to the, our interest rate is 0 0.065 because that's what 6.5% means uh, times, and then we don't know the amount in years, so I'm gonna keep that as T. So if I wanted to solve this exponential equation, um, I want my exponential part alone. So first thing I want to do is divide by 3,000 on both sides. So that will be 3 is equal to e to the 0 0.065t. Now, this is like 3 to the 1. There's no way to make those powers match. We know e is close to 3, so um, we can kind of think about that. Um, but I want to use natural log. So I'm going to write natural log of that number 3 has to equal natural log of that e to the 0 0.065t. And the reason why I'm using that natural log is because um, that has a base of e. So really these two things will undo each other and I'm left with just 0 0.065t. Again, they're inverses, so they undo each other. And I have natural log of three here, divide by 0 0.065, divide by 0 0.065. And if I punch that into my calculator, natural log of three, make sure you close off the parenthesis, divided by 0 0.065. That's gonna be 16.9 is equal to our time. So about 16, almost 17 years to make your money triple if it's compounding continuously. That means it's earning money on top of money on top of money. So this again was our little formula that we used uh, to solve that exponential problem.